Hey guys, Uncle Ray. Welcome to another episode of the Crypto Bellwether. On this channel, we cut through the hype and the noise to give you the non-biased information you can use to capitalize on the next bull run, which is the reason I started this channel. I truly believe this next bull run is the biggest opportunity for the average person to change their financial future. But if you've got misinformation, guys, good luck. Now I say that with love. That's why I do a lot of research and I share it with you. I do this research for me and I'm non-biased. I'm not going to lie to myself, right? So when I go down a rabbit hole and something leads me into a better investment, I'm just going to follow the money, the adoption, and I'm going to track who the power players are and what are they implementing and what they're going to do and what they're doing. Well, guys, from what I can tell right now, the legacy banks and the major fintech players like SWIFT and FIS Global, JP Morgan, all those power players are so far out in front of maintaining their dominance, it's not even funny. And if you've done that type of research, guys, you'll find it humorous and actually an insult to your intelligence when people tell you stupid, stupid things like, you know, Ripple XRP is going to tokenize the world. Everything's going to run on their rails. Guys, it's really not even debatable at this point. And we could have debated that about a year and a half ago. But right now, the roadmaps are out there. All you got to do is spend a little time like I do, and you will understand who's doing what. And the legacy banks and SWIFT, for example, guys, they have their roadmap and their game plan, and they're implementing it every day. And it does not need any blockchain at all. You could argue the fact that they need Link or maybe Quant. For the interoperability as it sits right now and that's kind of what this video is about guys link is way more than interoperability and i'm not a fan of their tokenomics however that project's adoption can't be denied and what it's doing that people do not realize it is basically allowing the banks and the power players like Swift and Fed now to take out the need for blockchain and all those rails. Now, those rails are going to be used, but let me be clear the writing's already on the wall. We know this to be true. They're not needed. Take your favorite project, no matter what it is, <clears throat> what it is XRP, XLM. Or whatever and if it disappears tomorrow swift won't blink legacy banks will not blink fed now will not blink they're all there and they may or may not get their piece of the pie i think most of them will however they're not needed and i'm going to prove that to you again in this video now guys i'm not here to be right i'm here to be correct in my thinking so I follow the money, follow the adoption, and I follow the power players. And when you do, and you go straight to the source, you don't go to, you know, influencers that tell you what you want to hear and tell you all you got to do is put $1,000 in XRP and change your life. Well, if that's what you believe, guys, good luck. And I wish you well. And I really, really do. But the facts are the power players right now that are ruling the flow of money that can control the flow of money and dominate cross-border payments and everything else right now, not only are they going to do the same thing in the future, they're going to gain market share, gain it, not lose it to all the so-called disruptors. Those guys, they have their technology, they have the money, they have the power, and they have the resources. And they already have the customers. 
And I know that's not what you guys want to hear, but if you hear me out and watch this video, hey, the big picture can't be denied. But the reason I harp on this so bad, because Lord knows it doesn't really help grow my channel. If I told you XRP is going to 10K and I yelled that loud enough, well, my channel would explode. I know that to be true. But guys, I believe in karma and I'm here for you and I'm here to capitalize on the next bull run. So I can't tell you something that is not true when I know it to not be true. So I'm going to prove a lot of this to you in this video. And when you watch it, guys, it comes straight from the source. We're going to, I'm going to show you a clip from the founder of Link, who has no reason to lie to me and you, and another developer that just spoke at a big conference. He's not here to hype up anything. He's just telling you about Chainlink. But when he talks about Chainlink, that includes Swift. And I'm here to tell you in this video, guys, Link is allowing the banks and the power players like Swift to get rid of the middleman being blockchain. So CCIP is that mechanism, that gateway, that bridge, or whatever that allows Swift and allows banks and it's going to allow FedNow and anyone else to go back and forth from their current ecosystem, let's call that Web 2, into the future of Web 3 and communicate together and trade together without the need of all this new technology that is so disruptive. Yes, it's new technology, but they have it and they're trying to slim, uh, slim line it so that they don't need anything that could cause a bottleneck or cause more risk. And so if you take out the middleman, which is kind of the, say, XRP rails or the XLM rails, if you take that out, you got a more secure project and a more secure mechanism. So it has less risk. And guess what, guys? They have more control and it's compatible with their current system and that's what they want anyway i'm going to prove that to you i know i'm rambling on bear with me guys now what i'm about to show you is a clip from the founder of Chainlink, and he's talking about what the banks are trying to do not what everyone tells you they're trying to do this is pretty much coming straight from the source he works directly with banks around the world every single day Listen what he says. And this is uh, really the realization that's driving a lot of CCIP adoption. The other great thing about CCIP is there is no chain. So a lot of the solutions that seek or want to create interoperability across capital markets and banks, what they're actually doing is they're injecting a chain in between banks, which will essentially act like settlement infrastructure. And banks do not need more settlement infrastructure in between them and, uh, and their counterparties. It's just not something they're excited to do. A, there's a lot of settlement infrastructure already, and they're making their own chains for that purpose. And B, they kind of view it as a cost that they don't want or need. What they actually want is they want more usership, more liquidity, and they want, to act, they want to connect to their existing counterparties efficiently. And that's what CCIP is meant to do. CCIP doesn't have a chain. CCIP doesn't have um, any way to do settlement. It's, it's just a way for one chain to send value or tokens to another chain together with a message that can trigger outcomes in that chain. And so it's actually much more advanced in its, in its elegance and simplicity in that it serves the specific need that they have very well without creating this problem of injecting a blockchain in between them and the other bank. And this is what almost every other, pretty much every other enterprise blockchain solution does, is it tries to say it does something else or it does interoperability or something. But what it's actually doing is it's in injecting a blockchain in between two banks and trying to become the settlement infrastructure, which once again, banks have no interest in and won't be doing much more than that. CSDs. Do you hear what he said? Banks have no interest in that, and that is not what they're going to be doing. So guys, here's what I've been saying for the last six months, and I've seen it grow and grow and grow. At first, I was speculating, and now they're implementing this. You have atomic settlement on a ledger. So the whole world's going to be tokenized. And yes, a lot of people tell you, oh, it's all going to be tokenized on the XRP ledger. Well, they don't need that. Now, it's going to get it shared. Don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not here to rag on any 
of the ISO 222 compliant tokens. I own pretty much every one of them, and I think they're going to get their share. They're not going to lead the bull run, and they're not going to give you life-changing gains. But the reason I harp on these videos is I want you to understand the big picture. Because if you understand that the whole world is not, for instance, going to run on XRP rails, and if you understand how the interoperability and kind of the big picture looks, you'll be happy to take a 10, 12, 15x profit and not hold these banking tokens for 10 years when they literally could be obsolete as we speak. I'm not so sure blockchain itself is not just a stepping stone because guys, I do deep dives and I highly encourage you guys to do non-biased deep dives straight from the source and you'll understand the future is tokenized assets. So what that looks like, whether someone sends me money uh, or if I'm going to trade a car for a boat or a house for another house or Bitcoin for a house or Bitcoin for a boat or cash for uh, one fiat from the other, doesn't matter. They tokenize that and into a smart contract and they'll be able to send it from one bank through CCIP, which is Chainlink, to the other bank, or to FinTech, or to wherever. But there's no token going to be needed, or no token that we can purchase. It will just be a mechanism. But that smart contract basically will have a message embedded into it, and the ledger will sort it out. And that's what I'm going to talk about next. I went to Claude, my buddy, who's AI, and I asked him to list all the banks and fintechs and major corporations that have that with the flow of money that have their own blockchain or are in the process or whatever that were private. So let me show you what Claude spit out. Guys, it's about 150 different names. It's JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, uh, RBC Scotland, National Bank of Canada, uh, Bank of Qatar, Bank of China, Merchants Bank. Um, it goes on and on and on. Guys, all the banks in the world pretty much are either creating their own blockchain or, like Claude told me, was working with a consortium blockchain, which I'll be honest, I didn't know exactly what that was. So I said, explain that. And it said, well, for the banks that don't want to create their own private blockchain, they can work with like R3 Quarter to set up a, block, a private blockchain through them. There's no XDC, unfortunately. There's no mechanism. There's no token needed. They will just use the R3 quarter um, infrastructure to create whatever blockchain private that they need. And they'll use like R3 quarters ledger to move the tokenized assets through there in the future. So, guys, people don't understand this, but Visa, MasterCard, HSBC, they all have their own private blockchains. JP Morgan has multiple blockchains. Goldman Sachs, same thing. Guys, the future of banking and the flow of money is directly going to be, it is, excuse me, is still going to be dominated by the exact same players that are dominating now. Now, I know that's a big statement, and I skipped something, but check this out. This is the guy who is a developer who just spoke at a big conference, and he talks about, look, the banking tokens, the ISO tokens are going to be fine. They're going to get their share. But look, XRP, this isn't even a conversation that is debatable. Heck, even Brad or David would not debate this. I've heard both of them say, we're not trying to compete with SWIFT 
are the legacy banks or take over the market. We're trying to basically make everything better for them. That's why they have so many different projects. Now, guys, for whatever this word is worth, I have a, a new video coming out about the big announcement about ODL. And it's a big deal. You need to watch that if you have if you own XRP and if you don't really understand how ODL works or the future of ODL and Ripple, you need to watch that video. And I'll have that out in the next couple of days. Now Listen to what this guy says about SWIFT and tokenized assets and banking tokens, their future. Check it out. Right. Now, before you freak out and say this is the end to XRP or XLM or one of the other dozen cross-border remnant systems, a very interesting report came out from the World Economic Forum that shows over $16 trillion is available and going to be accessible by the tokenization of global illiquid assets. The world runs on capitalism. There's going to be competition. You're going to have other payment networks. You're going to have other projects. You're going to have other companies all trying to get their fair share or their piece of the pie. Somehow, even though it's been five days since the events, my voice is still cracking. I completely lost it when speaking at the Cypherpunk event with George. But bottom line is, guys, this is going to allow Swift, one of the, the payment infrastructure really of the entire world, to no longer be outdated. It's going to completely unlock the potential of tokenization with Swift itself and would allow things like FedNow, which was launched by the Federal Reserve, to compete with cross-border remnant systems provided by different cryptos or blockchains or distributed ledgers. Now, I haven't purchased Link in a very long time, but... Did you hear what he said, guys? It's going to make SWIFT not outdated, and they're going to be able to compete with the so-called disruptive technology of like Ripple, XRP, or XLM, or whoever. Guys, I'm telling you, if you just do the research on, for instance, what's Link up to? What is Goldman Sachs up to? What's JP Morgan up to? What's the plan for Fed now, right? Don't try to have, um, you know, don't try to do research to prove yourself right. Just open up your mind and do the research and say, what is Fed now trying to do? What's SWIFT going to do to not be disrupted? What's the plan? JP Morgan dominates. It's not even close. The flow of money around the world. What are they going to do to not give that up? Well, guys, when you find out that information, You'll understand, man, I better be taking some profits in the next bull run if you own those ISO 222 compliant tokens like me. I'm going to sell every single one of them. And why would I even hold 10% for 10 years from now when, quite honestly, they may not be around? And whether they are or not, I'm going to take those profits and then I'll reevaluate. The start of the next bull run after the one that's about to come. And hopefully, if I play it right and if you play it right, we'll have a lot more money to buy and start over. Now, think about this also, guys. 90, probably 5% of all projects out there, all of them, are going to disappear. But also, they all have what I consider bad tokenomics, right? They're nowhere close to fully diluted. Now, why is that important? Guys, no matter how massive this bull run is, and no matter how massive, we'll just say XRP, no matter how big it pumps in the next bull run, it could be obsolete in 10 years. I'm not saying it is, but I'm not waiting around to take my profits. But here's one thing I 100% know for sure, and I'll bet my reputation, reputation on it. I don't care how high XRP, XLM, Avalanche, Polygon, any of those projects, don't care how high they pump, they're coming back, guys, and they're going to come back hard when that bull runs over. So why would anyone, in my opinion, in their right mind, now, I'm excluding Bitcoin and maybe even Ethereum, but outside of that, why would anyone take a, a wallet, a portfolio, and make a 15x, a 20x, a 25x? Some people believe they're going to get a 1,000x for XRP during the next bull run.
But if you get any of that, why would you write it all the way back down to 50 cent XRP again? Maybe lower. So who wants to own XRP or any token, guys? I'm not harping on XRP, but why would you want to own? Let's just use XRP for the example. It's at what, 50 cents right now. Let's say it pumps to $10. That's not life changing, but it could be, especially if you took those profits and you rolled them into the next bull run, right? You don't have a profit, guys, until you take it. But why would you want to watch a, a $10,000 portfolio go to quarter a million, half a million, whatever, and then watch it come all the way back down to 18000 and set on it two or three years? The risk is off the charts, guys. And he's just telling you right now but this video in my opinion proves it to you from as close to the source the founder of links not lying to you he's telling you the banks don't want to use middle man, men whatsoever they don't want to use that bridge they may have to they may have to use it short term they may use it for a short uh, a small corridor somewhere in the world to make their life simple but guys for instance not one bank owns XRP. They don't buy it. They don't own it. So what would be the catalyst to send XRP to the moon? I don't see it. But either way, guys, I'm telling you, if you do your research, go to JP Morgan's website, surf around, open your mind, just say, hey, what are they up to? Goldman Sachs. Go to Swift. Say, what are y'all doing with those tokenized assets? Why does MasterCard have its own blockchain? What's their plan? What's the deal with Visa and consensus with their tokenized asset platforms? Wow, what's their goal? Guys, well, I'm here to tell you, and I don't like it, but the mega legacy banks and Wall Street are going to dominate everything to do with Web3 from the metaverse to DeFi to whatever. The only hope we have for any form of decentralization whatsoever is. Bitcoin, and they're trying to get rid of that avenue as well. Anyway, guys, that being said, the reason I harp on this so much is so that you'll just understand the big picture. And guys, if you are following someone that is not sharing this type of information, if they're only doing research on your favorite project, well, guys, you're going to be highly misinformed. If we were betting on the NFL for who's going to win the Super Bowl, and I went around and interviewed coaches and players and quarterbacks for every single team, all what, 42 teams, and you only researched the one in your hometown because that's your favorite team, and, and your team might be ranked number 20 or 30, but you think they're going to win because the coach said he had a plan and the quarterback said, we're, I'm the best ever and I, we got the best running back. But you haven't even interviewed or looked at the other 41 teams. What are the odds of you winning the Super Bowl? I tell you what it is. It's one in 42. Those aren't good, good odds, guys. Anyway, that being said, I know I get to rambling. But let's look at the chart. I like Link. I'm not in love with the tokenomics. And for the life of me, it's hard to figure out why it hasn't pumped and been one of the strongest tokens all year because it has got more positive news than pretty much any project out there, especially that it's just a blockchain. Ripple gets positive news every day, but that has nothing to do with XRP more than probably uh 90, 75 to 90 percent of the time it has nothing to do with the xrp token itself ripple gets that news but link if you're using link or you hear a partnership you gotta buy link and it's still not going up and hasn't been that strong all year it's had its moments but it keeps going down but look at this guys it's getting beat down this week and today i love it but let's look with a little bit of luck, guys, we might get the low of the bull run or the bear run for Link. And I'm going to be stacking because I really believe that if you can get Link really right now, and guys, if it gets down to around $5, 
There doesn't it doesn't get a better swing trade than that. And that's a lot of projects coming up right now, guys, because me personally, I look at macro. I like my charts to match up with macro. We're in a recession, whether people want to acknowledge that or not. And they're, but we're about to be so far into it that you're not going to be able to deny it. There's not one positive thing going on in America financially, in the macro, or the globe. We're at war. I mean, everything is horrible, guys. There's nothing positive, And the Fed can't run to the rescue tomorrow to print money because of inflation. All of the commodities, you want to make some money in investing, start buying commodities. They're going up and up and up. Gas, oil, everything is going to go up for the short term. Then we're probably going to get deflation in commodities. But for now, guys, there's not one reason for this bull run in crypto to kick off. So if we're lucky, I mean, guys, these are, the, I, I can't be more excited. These are the good times. You should wake up every morning and be jumping up and down and cheering for your favorite project to go down. Like Link, go, go, go. I want Link to go to $4, $3. I want HBAR, one of my favorite projects. It's under five cents. I want it to get to four cents, three cents, two cents. Quant, I want to hit the low of the bear run. That would be under $46. Could you imagine buying $40 quant? Guys, these are the good times. You buy low, you sell high. When everyone's calling this type of information FUD, you start stacking. And when they get excited and say, oh, man, you got to buy, you got to buy. In the FOMO times, when Bitcoin's making a new high and your favorite altcoin's already done a 10, 12, 15x, you start dollar cost averaging out and take your profits. That way, you won't be part of the 95% of the people that lose money in crypto. You won't be part of the XRP army that has stacked XRP for six years. Six years, and their portfolio might be up 20% when they could have already been extremely successful financially if they would have sold in the, the all time high bear or bull run in 2017 18. And then if they would have took those profits and then sold or bought a different project and sold out in 21 and be stacking again. Guys, look how far ahead they would be. But no, they believed the hype and they hodled XRP and a lot of people hodled other tokens and didn't take profits. And how do I know I'm right, guys? Because that's the number one thing people come to me for coaching. They've taken a small amount of money. Some of them seven years ago, and they turned it into a large amount of money, some of them multiple times, and now they just have a little bit of money to show for it. Guys, I don't want that to happen to you, and I know I'm rambling, but guys, do your own research, and look, if you're not going to believe the founder of Chainlink and you know uh, people like that, I can't help you, but I want you to be extremely successful because I can't be more bullish. And I know I'm rambling, so I'm going to get out of here. If you appreciate this hard work, this research, hit that like button. And no matter what, guys, come back and be part of this community. Take care.